Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, reporting in on all of the major moves that the Dallas Cowboys are making, and, um, well... Yeah, there we have it. Um, we have a couple of things that are interesting dynamic-wise. Trey Lance, of course, is trending right now. Um, there's a rumor being spread about me and the crew about something we did or were supposed to do. Um, rumor being that the Minnesota Vikings may be interested in Trey Lance and that they would be, you know, as Rich Eisen put it, you know, maybe they give up a third-round pick. Well, here's the reality here is what's interesting about that is Minnesota doesn't have a third-round pick. It's actually been traded. They do have two fourth-round picks, and maybe, and, and I pointed out that their fourth-round picks are higher than our fourth, well, no, one of them is. Well, the other one would be right about the same because it's a trade with the Detroit Lions. But be that as it may, maybe it could be a package of a couple of picks. You know, maybe you get a six and a fourth or something like that. Um, and and you'd also get five point three million dollars in cap relief. I don't know if anything will happen about that because, you know, we believe in our guys, and Trey Lance is the bargaining chip to try and help negotiate a deal with Dak Prescott. Interesting as we do nothing, you know, the clock is ticking that next Wednesday, the team, next Wednesday, yeah, next Wednesday, the team needs to be under the salary cap and we have yet to restructure anybody to get there or cut any players. Um, the Seattle Seahawks that have made one of the worst trades, maybe yeah, one of the worst trades, definitely, um, have informed Jamal Adams. Quadre Diggs and Will Disley that they're being released, saving them $34 million. Now, keep in mind here, um, we had a lot of Cowboy fans that really wanted us to go ahead and get um, Jamal Adams safety-wise. And what they found out is he's an in-the-box safety, although that might have helped us out a little bit because we have a problem tackling in the middle. And in-the-box means is you are more of a tackling safety, a run stopper, as opposed to a cover safety. And he got exposed from them. Now, keep in mind, they gave up two number ones for Jamal Adams and ended up paying him a boatload of money and just did not work out. And so this is where... It's kind of interesting because there have been moves that people had said, this is the perfect move for the Cowboys. And I'll give you another one. Like, And although some people probably disagree with this, but I remember when Colin Cowherd said, as we were doing, and this is where it's all deja vu. Um, when we were looking at Dak Prescott's contract, they were saying that the Cowboys should just let Dak Prescott walk and trade for Derek Carr because his cap number was a lot lower than Dax, and that it would be the same. I mean, we heard uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, you know, I let Dak walk and take Teddy Bridgewater, and so on. We've always heard, you know, what people should do, uh, what people think the Cowboys should do and not paying Dak Prescott. Here's the thing that I want to put out here, okay? I know the Cowboys have not had the success that we would like to have, in the playoffs. I get that. But here's the thing. Since the Dallas Cowboys were winning Super Bowls, if you take all of those seasons that we've had, and some of them have been brutal. I mean, we had three 5-11 and 11 seasons in a row. We had three 8-8 eight eight seasons in a row. Right now, we've had three 12-5. and five. Isn't that kind of crazy that... We, the Cowboys are based on threes. Here's what's crazy. We've had two 13-3 seasons in that 29 years. We've had four 12-plus win seasons. I mean, four 12-win seasons. 
All of them belong with the Cowboys and Dak Prescott, except for one 13 and three season and one 12 and four season with Tony Romo. That's it. That's the list. Now, the Cowboys have had a problem getting to the NFC Championship game for 29 years. 29 years. Think about that for a second. The best three that we've had would be the last three. It just has. If you want to look and say something positive, when you look at the coaches, the quarterbacks, and all of the people that have been here, I don't want to agree with Stephen Jones who says that, you know, we've won the second most amount of regular season games than anybody else. To me, what that says is we've built enough to make it to the playoffs. And Jerry Jones actually admitted the, the real problem when he was asked about culture. He said if culture means not being able to stop the run and run the football, then we do have a culture problem. So remedying this is recognizing, and this is where the Cowboys need to recognize things. The Seattle Seahawks realize we screwed up with Jamal Adams. The Denver Broncos realize we screwed up with Russell Wilson. The Eagles screwed up with Carson Wentz. And they all moved on from their mistakes and tried to rectify them. The Cowboys messed up with Michael Gallup. They just did. Just did. And instead of saying, we need to fix this, they, oh, we're not sure that we want to do that. They wait so long to make a decision that it ends up costing them. They had the opportunity when Dak Prescott was $680,000 and then $2 million to get a deal done. And instead, they couldn't get it done in time, and they end up having to take a $31 million cap hit. And then they proceed, taking their time, getting against the clock, and being rushed, end up screwing the pooch on another contract. I'm not mad at Dak Prescott's agent, Tom France. If they want to take the chances and all that, or make you take all the risks and things and play poker, hey, <laughs> you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. They screwed up. They took the risk, and they crapped out. And right now, they have to recognize they need to make some changes to go ahead. Now, some people will look and say, you know, Tyron Smith, you know, that signals that the Cowboys aren't in. And it's kind of funny to me because – Everybody's been saying for the last couple of years, we need to move on from Tyron Smith. We got, we, we got to move on from Tyron Smith. And if now, of course, everybody's saying, well, you know, Tyron Smith gone. Now we got problems on the offensive line. Um, as I look, let me go back here. There's an old saying, uh, you know, if I was losing with you, I could still lose without you. Um. The thing about Tyron Smith is when you tie up the resources with Tyron Smith, you're under the assumption that he's going to be there. And unfortunately, there's not enough resources to get a quality person to go with them. And when we look at this since 2020 and where we had two games of Tyron Smith, 11 games in 2021, four games in 22, and 13 games this year, Tyron Smith has missed as much time almost as he's played. And so, yes, he is an incredible player. But your best ability is your availability. And this is where you have to look at it and say, okay, where can we get more production? We can go ahead and move Tyler Smith out there, and maybe we draft a guard. There you go. That position's in there, okay? And you recognize that you've been rolling the dice for all these years. Um, it's literally, you know, how long will he be able to last? Uh, he can get paid out there. He can get paid, and, and he should. 
And I hope he has a chance to challenge for a Super Bowl. But what we need now is we need more forward thinking and taking risks. As I sit here and I think about how the Cowboys, because Cowboys are trending and people are showing Jerry Jones from his first press conference and things when he bought the Cowboys for $140 million. I wonder if the Cowboys hadn't done things like trading for Charles Haley or bringing in Deion Sanders or making the trade with Herschel Walker. How many Super Bowls would the Cowboys have won? Because bringing in free agents like Jay Novacek and Ray Donaldson and Deion Sanders and Nate Newton were cornerstone pieces with Deion Sanders and Charles Haley that they didn't get from the draft. And this is where Jerry Jones needs to recognize and get back to his roots. Hey, Admit you've made some mistakes, bro, and move on and learn from them. And um, maybe, just maybe, we can right this ship. Again, if you're winning 12 wins a season, you're not that far away from being able to compete. And that's where you don't necessarily have to go all in, but you got to go in. You got to start taking some chances. Alrighty, good people. I will be catching you guys on the flip side. And uh, you're up to date with all the crazy moves that the Dallas Cowboys are making.